Greetings. Uh, I'm, I'm going to let you guys do it from the top, né? Because I just messed that up. Great. That's me. Guys, you know, hi. I'll tell you why I'm hesitant to, like, start. Because this is, this is a very important moment, like, for me. Because I realize one thing. I'm a comedian. I travel, and I, my job is to make people laugh from all over the country. And I've realized one thing during my job. You will never make everybody happy. Like, South Africans are very... Guys. Nee, nah, actually, I'm talking about you guys. Like, there's people here even judging me already. It's very difficult making South Africans happy. And I'll tell you when I started to give up on the notion of everybody will be happy. Do you guys remember last year, MTN had a competition where you could win a plane? Do you remember this? You could take out your phone, send an SMS, and win a plane. I don't know if this mic is... Guys, a plane. And people still go, yeah, but do you know how expensive jet fuel is? Okay, where are you going to park the plane? My favorite one was, you win a plane, and then what? I'm like, then you have a plane. Maybe my pronunciation, guys, aeroplane. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, if you can't make someone happy by giving them a plane, guys. Then I was like, I give up. Because your whole life changes when you have a plane. You know that, right? Barry White, what, what did you say your name was? Tumelo. Like, if you had a plane, it wouldn't matter. Like, you could come here in shorts, in a vest. People look at you, hi, boy, image. But do you have a plane? <laughs> exactly, on a plane. Like, that's, that's the power of a plane. Your name changed. If you had a nickname, what's your nickname? When you have a plane, your name even changes. People call you by a different name. Hey, chap! A turbulence! <laughs> the turbo! <laughs> Velocity! My, po my point is, give up on the notion of trying to make people happy. All right? And I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the social media world that we're living in. Like, 2016 is like, we, at, we are at the height of being known or trying to be known via social media. Guys, here's what I want to say to you guys. In the world, now listen, in the world, in the world, nobody cares about you. I don't want you guys to misunderstand what I'm saying. In the world, nobody cares about you. It's the most depressing, most liberating thing I'll ever say on stage. Like you, Mr. what is your name? Tebani. You have two parents, ne? Two parents who made you. I don't know why I did this, but... <laughs> they made you. You were made. <laughs> you were made by two people. Do you have siblings? How many siblings you got? How many brothers and sisters? <laughs> hey, black people. Because in his head, it's like, hey, but the cousin brother, I am now, your brother, I can't say, hey, man, I grew up with the brother, cousin, sister. When he says siblings, how many, how many siblings do you have? You got four siblings, great. So two parents, four siblings. Do you have friends? How many friends you got? 50. You have 50? 50? I'll give you 100. You have 100 friends. Two parents, four siblings. A hundred friends. That's 106 people. 106, 106 people love and care for my brother here. In the world, <laughs> there are over 7 billion people. Guys, if you wrote a test out of 7 billion, <laughs> and you only got 106, <laughs> first of all, you didn't study. That's the first thing. What the hell? <laughs> 106 out of 7 billion. That's not point not not. Nobody cares about this guy in the world. And I'm, I'm talking about him, but it, it's all of us. 
Because we live our lives. <laughs> it's all of us. If it, I'm not, <laughs> it's not just you. Because, <laughs> guys, we live our lives like the world is looking at us. We, we, we do it, we wake up, and I, maybe it's because it's called the World Wide Web, and we're all on it. So we think, we wake up, and we literally think that the world is looking at what we tweet and what we say. The world. You wake up, I'm awake. And there's someone in Pakistan going, ah, he's awake! He's awake! All that to say this, guys. Live your lives. If nobody's watching, if nobody cares, then live your lives. If you want to date him, date him. Take it easy. Oh, well, my God, my God. If you want to study the thing, study the thing. If you want to sleep with one of the speakers after the show, sleep with the speaker. I'm joking. <laughs> all right, all right. Guys, it's the, I'm serious. It's the most liberating thing to understand that you are allowed. I love, I love Urifulius. You are allowed to live your life. Stop looking around at who's watching because nobody's watching. It's the most depressing, most liberating thing you can ever experience in your life. Living a life that you want to live. Okay. Now, from, from that, we can build. And I'm not going to harp on this because I love Uri Fulis Th This is important, guys. It's everything, literally. And I know, like, as students and as young people, I don't know. I don't. Uh, who's the oldest person here? Like, how? I'm 31. Who's older than 31? <laughs> I'm 31. All right. And I don't know if it's an age thing that that you can only get this when you're older. I hate the fact that it is. Because I don't know. Y you remember The Matrix? You remember The Matrix? He was living his life. Ne? And then something happened. He, he was unplugged. And then he fell down the thing. And then he was like, you remember that thing? He was in the pod. And then he, they had the stuff inside him. And he was weak. And he did it. But then he was waking up. And then he woke up. And then fast forward 90 minutes later, he like went inside a dude and like blew the dude up. I just, I, that was bad. But that, here's, here's my experience of, of it's, it's, it almost feels like you have to, guys, I'm open to correction, but I, my experience of life thus far is it's only when I broke down, only when my relationships broke down, my workspace broke down, my marriage broke down, that I had to face myself. Like, I could not afford to look at you guys and care that you heard what I just said. And then I could start this journey. And some of you, not to take away your stories, some of you broke down very early in your lives. Some of, you, you, some of, some of your families broke apart very early in your lives. But you try and live your life as people who have perfect families. Some of you don't have food when you go home, but you walk out of here like you are full. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that's a pretense you're going to keep up until you literally can't move anymore and you cry out to the head, help me. And it's only then you're going to truly start living. Knowing yourself, I don't know if that's my experience or life's experience, but it's almost like w it only happens when you hit rock bottom. Because right now in 2016, guys, it's hard. It's tough. Smiling faces all around us. Filters paint a pretty scene. You know what I mean? Cameras flashing, your life is beaming while you're trying to figure out what it actually means. But you gotta. Do you know what I'm saying? So, this is a very hard one for me. You know it. You know the theory. Know yourself, be, be whatever. You know this stuff. But I just, my only, I'm going to move on from this point. My only hope is that you find this sooner than I did. 
is that you find yourself sooner than your friends, sooner than your parents did, sooner than everybody else around you. And that only happens when you actually look to yourself, right? My third and second last point, be damn good at what you do. Like above image and above what you look like, your talent, whatever it is, numbers, art, it speaks louder. What, is, what, are, what did Steve Jobs dress up as? When you think of Steve Jobs, what did he wear? Ma, who's the guy, Facebook guy? R R Zuckerberg. What does he look like? He looks like, he, he looks like freaking Barry White here. Barry White is dressed better than Mark Zuckerberg. But my, my point is this. I'm not saying don't look after what you look like. I'm saying don't put it first. Because what matters is what you are good at. And here's something as an artist. I'm going to say this as an artist. And it, 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 it kind of it, it makes sense to everybody here. Guys, you have to know the world standard of whatever it is that you do. You don't have to travel the world. But you have to be of a world standard. You can be great right here in South Africa, and trust me, the world will come calling. We're fine here. We're good here. So I'm not saying you have to go travel, but no, like if you're a singer, guys, if you've heard Mariah Carey sing, ne? you've heard Beyonce sing, ne? then ask yourself, can, nah, can I sing? <laughs> like you've got to learn to be objective with the very thing that you love to do. Otherwise, it's delusion. Guys, I used to host Essays Got Talent. I've seen, ooh la la. I've seen people like with families, guys. Families. Y'all yeah, know he's great. Oh, is it? Y'all yeah, know he's great. And, you re and they go up there and they're horrible. Ho guys, horrible. And it's because they don't have an internal gauge of where they're playing. If you're an IT guy, what is the standard in the world of IT? I don't know what you guys are studying. What do what you guys, some of, the, some of the other stuff? Architecture, construction, music, drama, philosophy, medicine. What is the world standard? Where, where do you want to play? Because like, if you're not going to be or strive for the best, then what's the point? I love this. This is, this is, uh, is going to be challenging. But this is one of the cop-outs. I feel it's a cop-out. There's a difference between I want to be the best I can be and I want to be the best there is. The one, your ceiling is yourself. So you, you can easily give up when you're tired. You can easily give up when you're hungry. You can easily give up when you fail again and go, well, that's the best I could be. But when you transfer your mind and go, what's going on in the world? What has been done? What can be done? You're already thinking completely differently. Because now your head, and I'm not talking about following people. I'm talking about the actual craft, the thing that you do. Not, I want to look like that person. What has been done in medicine? That's objective. Then you chase that. There's a difference between I want to be the best I can be and the best there is. And my encouragement to everyone here, chase the best there is. Because even if you don't get there, you'll be second best, third best in the world. Or you might even get there and set a standard for the next generation. Make sense? My last, my very last, very last point. Change your mind. You're allowed to. Guys, I studied advertising as well. I don't know, maybe, maybe it's advertising people who are very flimsy. But uh, no, ne? Now flimsy? What do you study? Flimsy, man. <laughs> I, studied, I studied advertising, right? And when I left advertising, I didn't leave because I didn't like it. I was doing well without trying. It was one of those, it just came naturally to me. And then I remember seeing my boss very frustrated because I used to be an intern outside my boss's office. And there was one evening, she walked past me, very frustrated. And I remember looking at her and going, if I work hard, I'm going to be that. <laughs> and, and here's the thing. I didn't, it wasn't I don't want, I didn't not want to be it. I just didn't know if the answer was yes. So I said to myself, okay, well, let me take a year off and decide if I want to be that. 
Because I knew if I come back to advertising and apply myself, I'm taking over the whole damn thing. Because it just came naturally to me. That's when I discovered comedy, and I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even tell my parents I'd quit my job. I just, I just stopped. I just went, <laughs> I went to the bank. This is my story. I'm not saying do this. <laughs> so <laughs> I went to the bank. I was like, hey, man, I work at Jupiter Drawing Room. Here's my salary slip. I worked out how much I'd need for a year. I'm not saying do this. I'm saying this is my story. I worked out how much I'd need for a year, went to the bank. This is, can I have a loan for this amount? Here's my slips. Here's my salary slips. Here, da-da-da. Bah! Approved. Walked out. Resigned. <laughs> With the money. <laughs> I'm not saying do that. I'm saying that's my story. And then in that year, comedy was not even, it wasn't even a thing I'd considered. And then I started it, and now I'm a comedian. It's life, guys. You can change your minds. You're, you, you're allowed to change your minds. And I know right now some of you are students, and you have situations, and you, you know, whatever, parents, and the as in Dagi, oh, black tax is a real thing. Oof, I feel like I struck a chord there. Yeah. And I know that that's a reality that exists, but there will always be a reality that exists. Do you know what I mean? If it's not your mom, it will be the debt, the student loan, the two kids, the ex-husband, the rent. The, you're always going to have something that will say, don't do the thing. So, look to your, what stage are you at in your life? And if you want to build an image, and if you want to, whatever that means to you, my encouragement, my encouragement for the evening is brand image, guys. It starts with the image you see, and then you show the world. Don't let the world see you and show you who you are. And that happens in your res room, in your, wherever you stay, that's, that's where that conversation happens. And then you go out and you show the world, hey, this is me. On your Twitter pages, I love Refule's thing. Honesty is so amazing because you can be the same everywhere. I could be standing in front of rich people, poor people, and the freedom of just being myself. Guys, it's the best gift you can give yourselves. So, if you want to shift your image, please shift it from looking outwards to looking inwards. And I promise you, the journey has begun. I think I'm done. You guys are great, man. That was fun.